So here's another use case. Oracle application log says, and I'm quoting almost verbatim, network issue contact network administrator. Oracle log, okay? Network disconnected, please contact network administrator. And, I thought, and it's happening random times of the day. And I thought, well, that's easy because if an Oracle server port goes up and down, what do we normally do from an infrastructure side on a server segment that's housing a very important database? You're going to have SNMP link status on there. So if the server reboots or the switch port goes down or bounces, you're going to get an SNMP alert. You do that for uplinks, you do that for virtual uh, big IPs and net scalers of the world, and you do it for important servers, you don't do it for end users, because every time they boot up and down, you don't want the SNMP to trigger, okay? Um, and, but in this case, switch port did not bounce. But they showed me the Oracle log and it said, network disconnected, please see your network administrator. I thought, well, that's presumptuous. But there was no intelligence built into this logging on the Oracle side. Network was disconnected from that perspective, okay? So we did the usual, right? We checked the switch logs, make sure nothing was happening. We make sure things like net network teaming, net NIC teaming, or load balancing, you have to rule that out, okay? What if it's LACP and there are different LACP? Read optimized LACP, write optimized LACP. LACP can be problematic because the MAC address can go up and down different NICs, okay? And it drives switches and routers crazy between the TCAM and the ARP table not matching up. So these are things that you have to rule out. And we rule those out. So then we said, all right, let's get, span that port and do a packet capture. And the, the Oracle log said, I have it right here, 1731 hours. Okay, so let's go back to uh, time of day and jump. You can see here it's around 1730. And so let's go to 1731 or let's do our normal workflow just for kicks. TCP analysis flag, Windows update, nothing. Okay, nothing to worry about. Um, scroll up and down. So as I'm scrolling up and down, I'm thinking, man, this is not going to be a good application. Why? A lot of turns, meaning the column's going back and forth, back and forth. And what else? Small packet sizes, right? So the data size is tiny. Okay. And you'll notice there's a lot of sin. Um, flag, so it's opening up a lot of connections. So let's just double check by going to uh, conversation pairs. And sure enough, a lot of packets, a lot of connections, tiny datagrams going back and forth. Okay. I brought that up and they said, don't worry, it's okay. It's all local uh, LAN access, not a big deal. And this is not a performance problem. This is Oracle saying the network was disconnected problem. So I'm not troubleshooting a performance problem. However, if I were to separate these two pairs, would I do that? Hell no. Look at the chattiness back and forth. Okay, so I would never separate them because they're going to be very, very latency sensitive. Okay. As I was looking at this, something else caught my eye. Why? Because I have a checklist. I go through these things and my brain does this to a fault. Okay. And this is why I'm bringing this up because when I walk out the house, I have a little bit of corner where my wallet, key, watch, phone, etc., is. It's always there. If someone talks to me in, during my ritual, guess what? I'm walking out without my wallet, without my watch, without a phone, without a key, something. If you interrupt my process, I'm on autopilot. I'm going to walk out without the key. And my wife every day says, you're an idiot. I said, but I don't want to waste any brain cycles. It's just there. It's my routine. Packet analysis is all about routine. And something caught my eye here. What caught my eye? Look at the UDP column. In a corporate environment outside a trading floor where there's a lot of multicast or video or voice, do you expect to see a lot of UDP packets? Not really. With exceptions like HSRP, right? UDP packets. 
Other than that, there's something else going on too. What UDP packet is that? DNS. DNS. Well, guess what, folks? Every application starts with LDAP and DNS. It's a critical part of your application. Without DNS, without LDAP, that application isn't working. Okay? So we file that away. We close this out. And let's go to 1731. Okay, we're, yeah, we're right about there. So other way to check to see chattiness is all the push act, push act. The more, remember I showed you this yesterday if you, uh, if you were in this session. If not, uh, the bottom line is if you see a lot of push act, like here, that means the application is doling out little bits at a time. It's not going to give you any more, which means you're completely latency bound. Okay, there's a sin happening there. So the next thing that I do normally after I scrolling down is what? Sort by delta. All right, let's do that. I come down. And uh, this is a little bit concerning, right? So at first glance, I can see, well, there's two, four, eight seconds, the delta time. So that could mean that there's blockage of traffic because there's binary, uh, exponential, the back off happening. If I can't get a packet through, I'm going to double my time and wait, try again, double my time and wait again. But it looks like it's not retransmissions at all. Okay, so these are just random delays. This one is particularly interesting because there was a big delay before a SYN packet happened. So that could be because client delay, right? I just opened up connection. I'm hanging out. I got nothing else to do. All of a sudden, you click on something. I'm going to open up another connection and get that work done. Okay? So that's another way to identify. So that one's like, okay, let's take a look because the delta is seven seconds. The good and the bad news is this. It's mostly bad news. There's nothing here that seems to be consistent. 500 millisecond consistent, good. 200 millisecond consistent, good. 45 second, good. Because if it's on a, on a strict boundary, you have a chance of identifying root cause faster. Because you just look for functions and procedures that run along those clock uh, boundaries, okay? This one is not, so I just pick one at random. I go back, and what happened here? Sure enough, nothing really that interesting. What you're gonna do is do uh, ACK TCP sequence number analysis to see if there are any outstanding bytes, okay? And it's not. So in other words, this is nothing more than the client hanging out, maybe he or she was talking on the phone, typing or something, and then they said submit form, okay? No big deal. All right. So we're at 1731. Let's scroll down. Oh, there was something in there that happened. Okay, it's just nothing. Just the sequence number got moved over. And we go down, we go down, TCP Windows update, nothing. Oh, there was a little squiggly there, but again, push act. Keep going, we keep going. TCP Windows update, for the most part, I don't care. Sometimes you have to look at it, but most of the time I'm not. And I keep going down, push act, push act, I get it, I get it, reset. Oh, there's a lot of resets there, right? You see that? Okay. Is that normal? Should you worry about reset connections? Yes or no? It depends. <laughs> Hate that answer. Um, but it depends. So Internet Explorer, for example, will kill an SSL connection with a reset. And people, you know, it's actually pretty efficient. Why waste fin, fin, finac in half a day when you can just abruptly hang up? Computers don't get hurt feelings. Okay, so um, that's what, what can happen with SSL. So um, we can go down that road, but, but we also see here fins here. Okay, so now, now, I want to look at that reset because if it should be consistent. If this is Internet Explorer based, it should always reset. I shouldn't see fin tear down the modified 3A handshake. So I went down that road for a little bit as well. Okay, came back and said, no, I don't know why it's doing it. Maybe it's timing out. Something else is going on. Um, so let's keep going. And then what the hell is that about? Stale entries? Zebra? What do I mean by zebra? For those of you that attended my sessions in the past, you know what my zebra is. When you hear hoof beats bo beating, da da dum, da da dum, da da dum, da da dum, right? Think horses, not zebras. 
So yes, that could be a mis uh, corrupted DNS entry. It could be anything, but it could be just, we can see there on the right-hand side that it could be looking IPv6 linked local type DNS queries. And this is when it hit me. I said, ah, I know what's going on. Why? Because I've seen this before. This is part of my toolkit that I put into my little brain up here. And when I see it, I can apply what I learned in the past. And that is Linux servers and Windows, modern Windows now, default to IPv6 first. Okay? So that's depending on your Linux operating system. Um, there's different comp files that you can look at. And it will be IPv6 first. So let's measure this because I'm going to hit Control T. I'm going to reset my time reference, and I'm going to go back to not time here, time of day, 1731. It matches my application log. So let's go back to looking at it from time display of beginning of capture. Okay. So when you hit Control T, time reference, it resets the clock for things like cumulative bytes and the clock here. Okay. Control T, Control M are very, very useful functions for uh, creating time reference. You can also do it by up here somewhere, I think. Um, I just hit Control T, so I, I even kind of forget where you set that. Um, probably in edit, right? Yeah, here it is, time, time reference, okay? But why do that when you can just do Control T? All right, so I set the time reference, and I come down to my 192.168 guy. He's trying awfully hard for DNS. And then 14 seconds later, he says, I give up. I'm going to connect using my bind 4, IPv4 that I already had in my entry. So why does it happen? Because DNS flush happens. And then he says, well, I'll try IPv6 because you're telling me I default to IPv6. I waste 14, 15 seconds. And this is what's commonly known as race condition. It doesn't happen all the time because the, the time is probably 15 seconds or so. I don't know. Plus or minus, right? So every once in a while, most of the time, I fall within that the network is disconnected alert. Why? If you can't resolve a host name, this Oracle application thought the network was disconnected. Again, presumptuous, but that's what they went with. Okay? And that's why there was mysterious failure throughout the day, totally random, because when the server was under load, doing something else for just the window, the race condition window is just a sliver. Okay? And the difference was it would time out, and the network card says, the application says, ah, there's no network. I can't resolve. Okay? Versus other times it was okay. Versus other times, even though the DNS query happened, it happened within that window, and then it said, I, I'll just go with IPv4, and off we went to the races. Okay? So there's actually a lot of things that's odd about here, right? So it should be quad A, because if you look at it, it says IPv6 address space, right? It could be reverse lookup, but it's not because it's a pointer record. It's an A record lookup. Um, so the question is, I don't know, right? So that part, I, don't, I didn't investigate. But what we did tell them was, look, change your net service to the comp file and delete IPv6 because we're not going to IPv6, or at the very least, go to IPv4. And then the problem went away. The moral of the story is that this was being troubleshot for like three, four weeks because it was a random hiccup and it recovered. Okay, and it wasn't meaning it's 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 a batch process between two servers, uh, so it wasn't as noticeable um, unless and then until the SA the application people were looking at the log saying and they correlated. Oh, every time we have this hiccup and slowness in the log, there was network disconnected error message. What was the client in this case? 192.168. No, I think it was uh, probably two servers talking to one another. Yep, you do. So, so that's actually an outstanding point. So a lot of times between web and middleware, and that's why it's so hard to try and isolate this traffic is that there's connection pooling. I open up 10 and I use it and it's always open and I, I can round robin different clients and it's nailed up for a reason. 
and trying to find your particular packet of the uh, among the 10 is a major pain in the ass it can be done but you do need certificates and you need to find the GUID the globally unique identifier and go manually find that it's about a four-hour effort if you have all the if it's not encrypted okay but in this case again I wasn't going for a performance issue which you would need to do that um, and, uh, and there's now a better way, by the way. So not to, not to say I'm trying to sell you anything, but there's an end user to application APM that we mapped the GUID. So you can, you can check that out on our website. Okay, so it's a one click. User saw a slowness, it was this transaction. There was a slowness in the transaction. These are the users impacted with a uh, with this right click drill down. All right, pretty cool. Um, so this one was nothing more than DNS. Again, if you talk to an application guy, he'll say, what is this server? Um, and they'll say 10.10.10.10. .10 .10 .10. I don't know, this is my app. And you, psh, you don't even know your own app ecosystem. Let's do the dependency mapping. But they're right. DNS is not their app. They use it, okay? So don't forget, DNS and LDAP uh, are critical parts of your application, okay? Any question on that one? So these are pretty easy, right? Again, why was it easy? A, interview the user, the SA knew what was going on, and we had a pretty good timestamp. I had a pretty good capture. I went through my workflow, the delays caught it, and then scrolling down around that time, I saw that little, well, it's, you don't even need that. It's pretty obvious here because it's a big block. But again, you have to train your eyes to do that. Okay? So we're starting to ramp up here. This one was pretty easy. 